This video presents a novel approach for generating continuous line illustrations from a given image. Continuous line illustration is an artistic style that consists of portraying an object or scene by making use of a single continuous line. In our approach, users segment the image into regions and assign a region type to each of them. Orientation fields are then created for region based on their types, and then a grid of the image is generated according to these fields. The illustration is modeled as a pass of grid cells that covers most areas of the grid. We also show how to transform continuous line illustrations into continuous line paintings, an artistic style consisting of a single line that varies in color and thickness while covering the entire canvas. In order to create a grid, users subdivide the input image into several regions and assign a region type to each of them. A grid is then generated per region based on its type. Our system supports four types of regions in our illustrations, directional, boundary, gradient, and blank. For directional regions, users trace a set of strokes in order to specify the orientation of the grid. The grid itself is created by first obtaining a tensor field from the input strokes through the use of radial basis functions. The streamlines are then placed parallel to the orientation of the eigenvectors of the tensor field. Boundary regions are created similarly by using the boundaries of the region to infer a tensor field. Gradient-type regions derive a tensor field from the most significant features of the image. In order to do this, we perform edge detection on the image and then derive a tensor field from the set of detected edges in the same way as we did for directional and boundary regions. The fields obtained for these three types of regions can also be combined in order to produce fields that possess attributes of two or more types. Blank-type regions are simply regions for which all computations are bypassed and are disconnected from the rest of the continuous line. Once grids have been created for all regions, they are combined into a single grid of the entire image. Once we have a grid, we obtain a pass by placing a grid cell cycle at a random position and grow the cycle by assimilating neighboring cells. We control the expansion of the cycle so that it tends to grow parallel to the orientation of the field employed for creating the grid. Multiple cycles can be used to fill different parts of the grid, and then we can combine them by opening and merging them at different points. We apply this process per region, and then on the grid as a whole. Our approach also allows the user to convert the cycle into paths with custom endpoints. This is done by first splitting the cycle based on the specified endpoints, and then expanding this path once more to fill the areas of the grid. We allow users to modify the path by moving, inserting, or removing points in the path in order to fill areas of the grid that were not covered during the process or to guide the line in a particular way. The continuous line illustration is finished after smoothing the line. In order to transform a continuous line illustration into a painting, we compute a set of walls for the painting by taking samples along a previously obtained continuous line illustration at very small intervals. The samples are then used for computing a Voronoi diagram for each region. Each diagram is then clipped against the boundaries of its corresponding region and composed into a larger diagram of the entire drawing space. Then, we apply several edge removal operations between phases of the diagram in order to obtain a single Voronoi phase that resembles a continuous line with variable thickness. Afterwards, we compute colors for both sides of each wall and diffuse the colors along the walls. The painting is finished after tracing the wall segments on top. Optionally, users can modify the color of the painting as a whole or per region in order to produce more artistic results. Here we present some results of our approach.